Welcome guys, I'm Gio here, hope you're having a great day and in this video we talk more about angular and observables. Let's check our example first. Here we have our simple page, uh, these are three links. We have uh, routing in this example and there is a list of game categories and each item here is a link. When I click to this, the route changes and as you see the address bar as well. And uh, when I move to different categories, the last part of URL changes as well. And here is our route handler component that does nothing right now, but we'll work on this. And also this is the home link for our app. When we click on this, we get to home page. Let's check our setup first. We have app component. This is very simple. We have main link here. We have categories as links. And we have router outlet where our routes will be uh, displayed, route handlers. And we have uh, TypeScript code here. And that's even simpler than the template itself. We are using our API service where we obtain the scats observable and then it is handled inside the template with async pipe. The service is uh, very simple as well. We have used it in other videos. And we have a list of game cats and each category contains a list of games and we have these two methods get categories and get games we'll be using this throughout this video we only have a single route it's called games uh, cat id this is a dynamic part of url where we pass in our category id now this is our games route where the route handling should happen and we write some code here this is template, this is basic template and it just does nothing right now. But in this page, what we want to accomplish is that reach to API and retrieve the games under a given category and then display them. So let's accomplish that. Let's check our code. Here we have a template, very simple one, where we iterate over games and we just print out the game of name, which is just a string. And in our component on init, we are using API called get games. And here we passing, we're passing category ID that we receive through route. And then we subscribe to this observable and uh, yeah, we assign games, whatever was returned from this call to our local property for this component games. And that way we display uh, the list of games. So let's check the actual result. Now let's uh, click on the strategy games first. And if I click on this, you know, it seems to be working. We have got three games and they are displayed. Now let's click another category and the list stayed the same even though URL is changed and there is clearly RPG at the end and we have this game so why is that? Now let's go to the main page. Now let's move on to RPG games you know maybe we don't have these games and we have some bug. But as you see, we, we've got some RPG games here. Now let's click on strategy games. And as you see, you know, URL has changed, but the list of games didn't. Now what's going on here? Why do we have this weird bug? Well, let me tell you. Problem here is that our component is not reactive. So when route changes, the first time, so we are on this page, and this component isn't created at all. Now when we move on to the specific route, games route, this component gets created, and whatever is category ID initially, here in on ng on init, we take this ID and just get the list of games, and they are displayed. But when this component is already created, and we click on another link, this component is already there, 
meaning ng on init won't be triggered again. So this value, this game's value, will stay the same because this code won't execute again. And the demonstration of that is that if I go to main page, select something, it gets displayed. When I try to change it, it doesn't react because ng on init is called once when component gets created. If I go main page, select strategy, they get displayed. So we have to make our component reactive and we need to react to category ID change. Let's check our results first and then discuss the code. Click on strategy games, we get the list. Click on RPG, we get the proper list. And now our component is reactive, we have no bugs and yeah, this is the end of the video. Of course not, we have you know still a lot to improve in our code, even though it's working, it doesn't mean it's a good solution. So let's check this. Fortunately, Angular uses observables a lot and for routes we can observe them, you know, we can observe route param changes and for route which is activated route, it is injected here in our constructor, we have params and this is observable and then we are using pipe and from this params we are taking category id, this one and we are passing it in our call for get games. So we subscribe to route param changes, which Angular provides for us. We don't need to do extra work here. And then, you know, we do our call that we did before, but here we call it with category ID. And it's going to work every time because when params change, this observable changes and when we get the updated category ID, then we make our call and you know, our component is reactive, but I don't like that and uh, it looks ugly, we can do much better and also it adds some inconvenience uh, because of this subscribe here, I need to maintain this subscription and when component gets deleted, I need to unsubscribe. Now, this is a tricky part, to improve this code, we need to make two key observations. First, is that this part here is observable. This can be used in any other places and it can be used separately and it has nothing to do with this subscription. This is just observable. It happens that we are subscribing to this observable, which is category ID, and then we are calling our get games. Now, second observation is that get game uh, call is not really tied to our routes component. Sure, it is used here but this call can be used in any other place in our app and this ID might came from any different sources. This method doesn't care. Now, another thing we need to look at is that when we're building a real app, our components are almost always reactive. It means that whenever we want to use get games in a reactive manner, we have to do something like this in other components or places as well. Maybe ID comes from some form, some field, some user interaction, maybe this ID even comes from another API call, it doesn't matter. Whenever we want to make this call reactive, we have to handle reactivity part in a place where we're using this method. And every time we have to repeat something like this. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, what if instead of string here and category id we pass observable and in our call whenever this observable changes we will react to that and make this new call so in the outside we just have to from the outside we just have to pass an observable and because observables might change we will react to it and return the new result so Let's try to do that.
Now, first thing that we did in, in our uh, get game call is that instead of uh, requiring here a string, we require observable uh, of strings. And in our call, whenever this cat ID changes, we are using switch map operator and we are using this new ID and returning the you know new result based on this call. So we are using switch map because if you know if this uh, uh, IDs change quickly, we will only react to the last one and you know ignore the uh, previous ones. And this is especially useful when we are using in a real up HTTP uh, service and HTTP request instead of this hard coded off and this get games and all of that. So the point is that we made this call uh, reactive. From now on, no matter the place we are using this call, we will just pass in category ID and it will return the results. Uh, if the ID changes, we get new games based on the ID and it will work fine. Now let's take a look at our games route. We have extracted category ID as a separate observable and instead of uh, games as a string array, we made it observable and we assigned games the call of a get game result where we are passing here, here the cat ID observable that we have defined before. Now inside the template, uh, we just changed it to games and async and it's just working fine. This pipe is really amazing and we have received some beautiful code here. Now, we already accomplished a lot. We got rid of the subscribe, it was not necessary, so we avoid the overhead of maintaining the subscription, it's huge. We also made get games called reactive, meaning in any other places in our app, we can just define observable, pass it here, and we already get the reactive call, reactive method call. It will return updated values based on this category ID. Here we take the advantage of uh, observable interfaces that Angular provides to us and uh, we received in the end very beautiful code that is very easy to read and re really easy to understand. You just check here, oh, category ID, we pass in here, we get the games, it is observable. And when you're thinking in terms of observables, it's, it's very easy to build the reactive applications because change is already assumed. When we were passing here just a string, we had to think about the change, we had to handle them separately, we have to unsubscribe and do all of this. But when we think in terms of observables, change is already assumed and we can build this reactive user experiences really fast. Now, if we are using some functional library like Lodash or FP or Remda, it's very useful in this case because here we can just add uh, some special function get or prop and indicate that we want to get the cat ID and this code will become even more beautiful. Now let's push this example even further and improve our get game. Uh, this call here is expecting observable, but in our app there might be cases where we don't want to make this call reactive where we, I want to just pass in single cat ID, obtain results and be done with it. Now this will be inconvenience because in the outside we have to wrap this category ID into observable, then pass it here, subscribe, do all of that. And it's a little in, inconvenient. So to avoid that, we can make this call even better. And uh, let me show you some helpers that I have created beforehand. Uh, this is a simple uh, type that I have de defined. It's called maybe observable. It's a generic and the maybe observable is, you know, th that's what it is. It is maybe observable. So it is either a value of this given type T or it is observable of type T. And I also have S observable function. It is taking maybe observable and it is returning you know, it's wrapping it and returning it as observable so if it is observable this value in our maybe observable value here then it will be returned as it is or if it is you know just a single value of type t then it will be wrapped using off and return as observable now we can take advantage of that and in our 
get games instead of uh, passing observable uh, we can require here maybe observable now because of this change now we can't directly subscribe to cat id because well it's maybe observable it can be observable it can be just a string so here comes our another helper this function as observable so let's use that and now it looks much much better this call is flexible we can either pass just a string, uh, just a category ID if we want to get a single result and we don't care about the change. Or we can pass an observable here by using this flexible type, it is allowed, and it will react to changes. And now this method can be very, very useful. Now we do this in one place, we make a smart reactive method and it can be used very very easily in other places so these two helpers here may be observable and as observable can be really helpful and we can use this pattern throughout our app to make our services and calls are reactive and make our app in general more reactive without thinking about some low level details like subscription managing it and all this overhead so that's it for this video click the like button subscribe and share it with your friends